Hello and hello everybody, my name is Lucy and welcome to Books and Brushes, July was a month. <laughs> Even without the reading rush, I read so many more books this month than normal, which is just, oh, it makes my reader heart so happy. This month was just so good with books and I've got so many to get through. Now I read 10 books this month, yeah, 10. <laughs> Not my usual three or four, but 10. So that means I'm going to be splitting this wrap up into two parts. So right now you are watching part one, which is everything pre-readathon, and then I'll do a part two, which is just, just solely for the reading rush. So today I'm going to share with you five, six books that I read, and let's get straight in and try and wrap all these up, because it's gonna be a time. So the first book I read in July was Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Now, I read this book in a day. <laughs> the first day of July, I was sick, I stayed home, I read this whole thing. It, it was a great time, except for throwing up but, but other than that, it was a great time. This book is about an artist who's high school age and she writes a webcomic. But this webcomic isn't just any little online thing, it is quite huge. Like, there is a fandom culture surrounding her story. There is fan events, there are fanfic writers, there are like cosplayers, all for this story online. So it's quite a secluded online world. And she's just a high school girl. She doesn't really see the fame of it. You know, she's anonymous on the web. Until one day, a boy moves into her school who just happens to be her biggest fanfic writer. And of course he doesn't know that she writes Monstrous Sea, his favorite story of all time. I absolutely loved this story. I thought it was so emotional, so well written. Obviously we've got an artist as the main character, which as you know, I love my art rep in books. I loved the characters. They were so complex and 3D and well written and well rounded and they had so much backstory and so much, you know, texture to them. They were like real people and they felt like real people you would know. This book also goes a lot into like mental health. Both of them struggle with their own separate issues and their own separate, you know, histories. And I think it deals with it very realistically and very well. I think it does go into it. There are some real points in this book where I feel, I relate. <laughs> I love the discussions on fandom culture and art and anonymity and the things you love. I love the conversations on communication and trust with people and each other and just these two characters are so much better together and it, they're just such good characters together. They represent a real good relationship I think and it, yeah it's just a really fun, nice, good book to read. It was kind of everything I wanted in the story and yeah I absolutely love this book. Next up I read Meat Market by Juno Dawson, a book I've not really heard anyone talk about on booktube but uh, this was so different than anything I've ever read and probably anything I'll ever read again so if you're looking for something unusual this be that. So this is a book about a girl who's a teenager growing up in London, very chabby, very normal until she gets thrust into the world of modelling. She's travelling the world, she's working incredibly hard, she's meeting some dodgy and strange people in strange situations and it's about her just completely losing who she was and trying to stay true to that and can she survive in this world that's supposed to be beautiful but it's actually pretty ugly. Now as I've said before I love the discussion on beauty and this really does talk about that a bit which is cool because it has a new take on it with the whole modelling thing. There's a lot on discussion of that and but more of the bullying of it. Like this girl is a model so you think oh everyone loves her but of course there's a lot of resentment towards her. People who knew her before be like <laughs> she's not pretty enough to be a model. And then there's the media saying oh these sticks are influencing our children but she is that stick and it's like she's a person too. This book does delve into a lot of complex topics from a very average main character. <laughs> I do like the main character, she's very realistic, like she's just a London girl, she's chabby, she, she's not amazingly mature but for what she goes through she sticks through it so incredibly well. She makes wrong decisions, she's flawed but you understand like why she makes these decisions, how tired she is, why she never saw this coming, 
This story is a lot about her kind of drifting away from her friends, her being in just such a different world and the ugliness of it, how tired she is, how it's not glamorous and all the things that come with this fame and fortune and the modelling industry. This topic also goes into abuse and sexual abuse so if you have any problems with that beware but it, it just goes into it so well. There's some real interesting conversations in this and it does go through that whole social media uproar and it's very modern in that respect and it's very interesting to be in the main character who's actually being the centre of this and what it's like from her perspective and the other model's perspective and what it's like to see it when you're in it, not when you're watching it on a billboard but when you're actually there. This story is sad, this story is cynical. If you like things that really delve into complex topics and really discuss them about the modern world, this is going to be a great book for you and it's just so unusual, I really really enjoyed it. Next up we have Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott, Mickey Dauntry and Tobias Ikonos. Three names, I struggle with them every time. So this book has been adapted into a movie recently which I haven't seen but I do want to get around to. This is a story about two teenagers with CF, cystic fibrosis, which is like a condition of the lungs where it like creates too much mucus and they struggle to breathe and there's like lung transplants. I think this story represents illness and cystic fibrosis in a very very good way. I don't know anyone with cystic fibrosis but it was really interesting to learn what the day-to-day -day life is of someone with cystic fibrosis, all the treatments and what their life is like growing up in the hospital and, and how it is in reality. What I loved about this book, even more than learning about this disease I didn't really know much about, was the two main characters, and all the characters really, were not just their disease. They were not just 2D cutouts, here's what you need to know about cystic fibrosis. They were two really real people, like realistic characters. Yeah, they had CF, but that wasn't the entirety of their personalities. They had such 3D rounded character personality traits. Like, I feel like this is a documentary about two real people. Our main character is very organised, very determined, very singular focused. She's got history and a backstory. She's got loves and dislikes. Again, our other character, Will, he has a very different take on life. He's had a very different life experience but he's very well rounded, you understand where he's coming from and you understand why he's cocky and funny and a bit laid back, doesn't really care and just wants to travel the world and use the time he has on this planet and you understand his mum even though she's in a completely different mindset about wanting him to go through all these experiments and all trials and how he completely disagrees with it but you've got two sides and you understand that there's an emotional deep complex reason for the, why all of these characters feel and act the way they do and that's what makes the story really real when the characters have roots and morals and motivations and they're just real, real characters. This story really talks about love and it, friendship and it talks about family. It goes into grief and it goes into a lot of serious topics as you can imagine with a book about two teens with an illness. <laughs> this book really got so sad in some parts and it is the story of these two kids falling in love and is love worth the risk? No, yes. Like there are some really beautiful, beautiful topics that are brought up and I think it's really well done in this story. Like even the nurses, the nurses you understand their motivations and why they're doing the things they do and they seem like real people who you know. So Will, I mean love interest, he happens to be an artist. So I don't know how I do it, I wasn't even looking for it, and there it is. Apparently I'm like a divining rod that manages to find art in all the books. <laughs> but yeah, if you want a story that really reps illness in a good way, if you want a story with good characters and emotion and topics about life and love and art and all that, I think you'll really enjoy this story. It's a really quick short read, but it was a really, really good story. Next up we have The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. Again, completely new story than the other ones we've had so far. All the other three we've had have been contemporaries, but now we're going into a more fantastical, futuristic element. So this story is about The Kingdom. Basically Disneyland on steroids. <laughs> it's set in the future where the world is polluted and many animals are extinct. But the Kingdom will make all your dreams come true. 
and in the kingdom are a group of ladies called the Fantasists who are there to serve you and there to make your dreams come true and do whatever it is that pleases you. These Fantasists happen to be animatronics, so they're like, are they real? Do they feel? That's a big topic in the story. All of the animals as well are like animatronic animals, so a lot of the animals that are, that are extinct in this world, have, they've been brought back in like an animatronic form and all these animatronic ladies just doing their duty and that's all they do because they're robots. So this story is about uh, one of our fantasies called Anna and it's basically set in the past and the present where the big question is, did Anna kill one of the employees at the park? It goes through Anna's version of events and how this whole story transpired and how all the events led up to this and it's intertwined with all these interviews and trial recordings and clips about the trial that she's going through for the murder of Owen. I really, really love this story, the mystery that was woven, the descriptions are beautiful and the way she describes like the animatronic having like human emotions and feelings but in like a robotic way like her hard drive freezes instead of her being lost for words you know she describes it so well I think and you can tell when you're reading it and it just it works <laughs> it works so well the mystery is really good did Anna do it the whole time you're questioning it she couldn't have because you're seeing it through her eyes and she's such a great character but did she it's getting likely nobody knows until you get to the end I love the intersections of all the little trials that are thrown in there and the way the story progresses. The story talks a lot about, you know, what is it to be human and to feel. Can these animatronics feel? So there's a lot of abuse in this, so beware of that. There's not loads, you don't actually see any, but hints of it are definitely there, so beware of that. And I, I really liked that, like the topic of just because these are animatronic robots, that doesn't mean they don't have any rights. Because these animatronics do seem to feel in some way, because they're very realistic. And that doesn't mean you can abuse them just because they're not human beings. I love how strange and sinister this world is. It's such an unusual, dark, depraved story. And I just, I really love the way it played out. I love the twist at the end. And I just thought it was a really, really well written story. I love the topic of the animals, like a lot of the animals in the park were, are extinct in this future. This is a future where a lot of the animals we have now do not exist but they've brought them back in this animatronic form and them seeing like a polar bear is incredible, an animal that's been extinct for hundreds of years and it makes you think, you know, wow, these animals we have on this planet will not be around forever if we keep treating them or letting them die and it's it's one of those things that makes the story really grounded and real and gritty in your mind as you read it. As you're reading this book, it just has a very atmospheric, gritty, sinister, magical feel to it, all in one. And it's like a fairy tale in the dark. It's an unusual story, it's not like anything I've ever read and I've really enjoyed it. I also found out in the acknowledgements that this author had a lot of help and friendship from Lauren Oliver, which happens to be an author I really love who wrote the Delirium trilogy. So that made me really happy. I was like, do you know what? I can see, I can see how those two would be friends. Their writing styles do have a similar beauty to it. I can definitely see the connection there. Yeah, if you like strange, dark, sinister stories that have animatronics and questions about love and murder and mysteries, it's all in this book, all wrapped up into one. So I do highly recommend The Kingdom. And I have one more book to share with you guys. Yep, <laughs> we're almost at the end of the list of the wrap ups anyway. And that is Outside by Sarah Ann Dukes. Now this, I don't wanna go too detailed into the synopsis for this, because it's one of those books where you just wanna go in knowing as little as possible. So describing why I loved it and all the bits I loved are gonna be tricky. But I'm gonna do my best. This book is about a girl who has been trapped inside her whole life and she's never seen the outside. From the very start of this book it is sinister, dark, strange, confusing, unusual and trying to figure out what the hell is going on, who is she, where is she, what, what's happening here and it's very very dark. I know I've said a lot of these books are dark today but this is dark. <laughs> Probably the darkest of them all. If you, that's all you want to know about this story, that's fine, just skip to ahead, I'll put a number down below. 
but I am going to talk a little bit about why I love this book, so mild spoilers coming up. Anyway, so here we are <laughs> in the spoiler reception. So this girl is in captivity and she escapes essentially and it's about her discovering the world and learning to navigate it even though she has absolutely zero clue. I love that this book talks a lot about like the psychology of this because I find that so interesting. It's one of those dark sinister horrible things that I'm just fascinated by. This character who has never been outside, she doesn't know anything, she doesn't know the words for anything and I just find the psychology of characters like this to be so interesting. But the characters we meet in this story, they have their own backstories, they're 3D as well. A lot of the books I've read this month have been so good just because the characters seem so real and the stories have been so well written and fluid. I love the twists we get, I love the way she learns about the way things are and her difficulty with communication because she just can't <laughs> and it's all so interesting like a lot of times in books characters just don't communicate well enough and it's annoying because if they just talk to each other things would make sense but in this story there is a lack of communication but it makes so much sense like you can understand why she just is unable to do these things why her brain just hasn't has been conditioned into this dark corner and how she really struggles to to understand the world that she's in and understand what she has gone through. And the people around her just don't know what she's gone through. They know it's something not great, but they have no idea the extent of it. This book is the ultimate dark, sinister Rapunzel. It is depraved, it has abuse and all sorts of criminal acts in here. So know that going in. But I love the psychology of the characters, how this life experience and how this way of living has conditioned her into this mindset. It's a really great book and if you love things like that, if you love like detective shows or any criminal minds, if you love things like that, if you love the dark and the depraved and if you love a story about characters breaking free and just discovery, this is a book for you. I've never seen this on booktube, I've never even heard of it anywhere, but it's such a good story and it needs so much more rep on the online booktube world because mm, I absolutely love this book and I need more people to read it. So these are the five books I read in the beginning of July. I also read Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I finished the audiobook for it, so that's number six. But I'm not going to talk about that because that's a reread and obviously you know Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, so let's not even bother. So these are the five plus Harry Potter is six books I've read in like the three weeks of July. And in my next video, I will go into the books I read for the reading rush. So I have another four books to talk about with you guys and I hope I will see you there. If you want to see that next video, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell because you don't want to be missing out on that video and all my updates from the reading rush. And if you like this video, please do like it, it really does help. And I want to know in the comments, what is the most amount of books you've read in a month? Like, what's your record? And which of these books do you think is the most interesting that you've read yourself or that you really fancy reading, that you really like the sound of? I hope you had a, as good a reading rush and July as I did, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.